Hi, my name is Jennifer Nassi, and I am a holistic health coach with Learning Leaf LLC. And I am here to talk to you today about whole grains. There are a lot of myths and misperceptions out there about what is a whole grain, what is not a whole grain, and how whole grains impact our bodies. It is my hope that I can clear some of those up for you today. And it is also my intention to permanently change your relationship with some of the foods that you're eating. In order to do that, I need you to be 100% present. So please, put down anything else you're doing, sit back, relax, enjoy, and take from this discussion the things that you feel will be the most impactful for you going forward. Your life will turn out completely differently when you understand the food you are putting in your body and you are eating well. Whole grains is a great place to start. We will get into my journey with whole grains and healing through food a bit later. But for now, let's get started talking about what is a whole grain and what is not. I have a girlfriend who has had a lot of digestive issues lately and we were trying to brainstorm some solutions for her recently. And I asked her what her whole grain intake was like. She surprised me by saying that she has whole grains every day. So I asked her how she's getting those in her diet. She said through her cereal, she has breakfast cereal every morning and she makes sure that they're a good source of whole grains. Well, here's where it gets a little bit confusing. For example, here we've got Cheerios, one of the most popular breakfast cereals in America. And sure enough, it says up here, whole grain guaranteed. Well, let's take a look. It starts out with whole grain oats, including the oat bran. That's a good place to start. But then it goes on from there. Modified cornstarch, sugar, salt, tripotassium phosphate, wheat starch, vitamin E as mixed to cofferols added to preserve freshness. Hmm, okay. Well, then we've got these guys. I think we all remember these from our childhood, and guess what? It also says whole grain guaranteed. Really? Let's take a closer look. Whole grain oats, marshmallows, sugar, modified cornstarch, corn syrup, dextrose, gelatin, calcium carbonate, yellows five and six, blue one, red number 40, which I hear is delicious by the way, artificial flavor, sugar, oat flour, corn syrup, cornstarch, salt, trisodium phosphate, color added, as if the other colors already added weren't enough, natural and artificial flavor, and then of course vitamin E added to preserve freshness again. Here we have good old Cocoa Puffs. And there it is, whole grain guaranteed. I bet you can see where I'm going with this one. Whole grain corn, sugar, cornmeal, corn syrup, canola and or rice bran oil, cocoa processed with alkali, color added, salt, fructose, natural and artificial flavor, trisodium phosphate, BHT added to preserve freshness. Mmm, sounds yummy. All right, well that's fair enough, but what about Wheaties, the breakfast of champions? Surely that's got to be a good source of whole grains. And it starts out okay, whole grain wheat, but it goes downhill from there. Sugar, salt, corn syrup, trisodium phosphate, BHT. I'm sure some of these are starting to sound familiar to you. So all right, breakfast cereals, that's a bit more processed. We can wrap our heads around that. What about other products like bread? Well, Wonder Bread came out with something called Smart Wheat Bread. That's a catchy title. And they say, and I quote, Smart Wheat is a new, soft, 100% whole wheat bread with 22 grams of whole grain, the calcium of 8 ounces of milk in 2 slices, and a good source of 9 vitamins and minerals. Sounds too good to be true. Unfortunately, it just might be. Let's take a look at the ingredients. Whole wheat flour, water, wheat gluten, sugar, yeast, cottonseed fiber, soy fiber, calcium carbonate, honey salt, wheat flour, vinegar, natural flavor, cellulose gum, soybean oil, sodium sterile lactylate, ethyl ox, I can't even pronounce some of these, ethoxylated mono and diglycerides, mono and diglycerides, calcium sulfate, ammonium sulfate, calcium propionate, and we're not even done yet. It keeps going. So as you can see, these aren't exactly whole grains the way nature intended us to consume them from harvest to when we actually eat them. There's a millions and millions of dollars that go into marketing and advertising around these kinds of products and millions of people out there believing that these are whole grains when in actuality it might not be so. 
So let's talk a little bit about whole grains and refined grains. Whole grains have been a central element to the human diet since humans settled into farming communities. We have been consuming whole grains for thousands and thousands of years, and for good reason. They are an excellent source of nutrition. They contain essential enzymes, iron, dietary fiber, vitamin E, and B-complex vitamins. They're absorbed more slowly, so they provide sustained energy and a higher quality energy. And I don't know anyone these days who can't use a bit more energy in their lives. When we look at white rice versus brown rice, White rice has had the outer hull taken off where the bran, fiber, v, B vitamins, oils, where all of those are. So what you are left with is a pure carbohydrate without any of the protein or other good stuff. Brown rice has all of that left intact. So you are still getting the bran, the fiber, the vitamins, all of those things our bodies thrive on. The other benefit is because all of that is left intact, it takes longer for us to digest. So if you hear people talking about the glycemic index or glycemic load, all that means is that when it takes longer to digest, it takes longer to get into our bloodstream. So our blood sugars rise more slowly and we get to avoid dropping off the cliff later. Whereas when we consume more processed, more refined foods like white rice, those things are broken down really quickly in our system. They're absorbed very rapidly into our bloodstream. Our blood sugars rapidly increase and then we crash later, which is where a lot of craving issues and things like that come in. But we'll be saving that piece for another talk on another day. The general rule is the more white the product, the more, the more nutritionally deficient it most likely is. It doesn't mean that you can never have it absolutely go out, enjoy your white rice with your stir fry, your Chinese food, whatever it might be. But I strongly encourage you to start experimenting more with whole grains in your home, more in your daily lives. See how it impacts your digestion, see how it impacts your energy levels and your overall health and well-being. There are specific ways to eat whole grains that make them easier to digest. One of the simplest things you can do is soak your grains. First though, you're going to rinse them. One of the reasons we rinse them is because when you think about the whole harvesting and transportation process, the grains are harvested, they're stored in big bins, they're transported all over. There's dirt and dust and all sorts of stuff involved, including rodent friends who also want access to the same food that we do. No one really likes to think about that. And before you go, oh, I don't want to have to deal with that with any of my whole grain products, just know that in our processed products, like cereals and different things like that, there is a certain amount of animal dander and excrement that is allowed to be included. So I feel like better to rinse it and get it out than consume it. So rinse your grains. After that, you're going to soak them. Grains are coated in something called phytic acid. Brown rice has probably the highest level of phytic acid of all of them. The issue with phytic acid is when we ingest it, it binds to certain minerals such as zinc and inhibits their absorption. So you want to soak your grains. It's actually very simple to do. Before you go to bed at night, rinse and then cover them with clean water. Let them soak all night throw them in your pot in the morning to make your breakfast porridge, or put them in your rice cooker so they can cook while you're gone during the day and are ready for you when you get home in the evening. Get up in the morning, rinse and soak them in the morning. Let them soak all day and they'll be ready for you at night. What if you forget? What if you don't have that much time to soak them? It's all right. Soak them for as long as you can, even if it's just a half an hour. Get in the habit of soaking your grains. Not only will it help break down that phytic acid, enabling your body to absorb more important minerals, but it will also make digestion easier for you. And as I've said already, the easier your digestion is, the less energy your body uses to digest your food, the more energy you have to put towards something that you really want to do. Another way to properly digest grains is to chew them. How many people bite and swallow their food? I know this is something I struggle with routinely. I'm a mother to two young kids. I have a husband. I run a business. Life gets busy. But I encourage you to take that time. Relax. Fully enjoy your food. 
Be fully present with the people you love who you are eating with. Take that time and again, make your digestion work easier for you. Digestion of carbohydrates starts in the mouth. There are enzymes that are released in your mouth that help you digest those carbohydrates. If you just quickly bite and swallow, you are bypassing that process and it just means there is so much more work for your digestive system to have to do. There are practitioners out there, methodologies out there that would say for each mouthful chew 100, 150 times. That's not doable for a lot of people these days. So I suggest starting easy. How about 20, 25, 30 times? Experiment. See how it works for you. See how it impacts your digestion and your energy levels. But I encourage you, again, to try chewing your grains. We want your food to give you energy and vibrancy. And truly, the food you put in your body is fuel for your body. So we want to up the nutritional intake and make it as easy on your system as possible. This concludes part one. In part two, we're going to delve into why people are having so many more issues with gluten sensitivities these days. There are so many more people suffering with digestive issues, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, colitis, Crohn's disease, diverticulitis. What is going on? What has changed in our diet and society that are creating more of these issues? We're also going to talk about some of the non-gluten grain options out there, and I will give some suggestions for how to use those. It is so much fun experimenting with some of these grains, whether you are going completely gluten-free or just want more variety or to reduce the amount of gluten in your diet. We're going to talk about some of the most common issues I hear people complaining about, such as not having enough time to incorporate whole grains or being bored by them, and some of my solutions for that. I will also get into a little bit about my own story in terms of healing and the issues that I've had to overcome through autoimmune disease and gluten intolerance and how I've gotten to where I'm at today and how I support people on their journey to health and wellness. In the meantime, I welcome you to visit my website, learningleafcoaching.com. There you can sign up for my newsletter. It's free. You will get health and wellness tips as well as recipes to try. You can also look at the resources section to find recipes and, and different things there to support you. You can also check out my blog. I encourage you to take a look, find what's gonna be interesting and fun and informative for you. Thank you again for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you again. Take care.